But whenever you do, you got to do it as if you have been gifted by God. But the problem is we compare ourselves to other people and to other animals. But nobody told you to be a snake or a horse or an eagle. You just got to learn how to be what you are. Because when you learn how to be what you are, you will discover that God can use you just as you are. Look at your neighbor say, there's something special about me. Good morning, and welcome to the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church broadcast. You're invited to join us during any of our Sunday morning worship services at 2714 Frederick Boulevard, Portsmouth, Virginia, where the redeemed of the Lord say so. Uh, today we're in Genesis 22, uh, verses 3 through 14. It's a little read, it's a little, little reading, uh, but if you hang in there with me, I hope we, we can chop it up and make sense of it. Uh, Genesis 22, verses 3 through 14. Not sure if anybody caught the draft. Anybody see the NFL draft? Yes. Y'all see the Eagles getting Super Bowl ready? <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's make, let's make it so, make it so. Genesis 22, here we go, verses, uh, verses 3 through 14. Do you have it? You there? All right. Confirm for me, you got it. What book are you in? Genesis. What chapter? 22. Uh, we'll start reading at verse 3 and stop at verse 14. You got it. A uh, New International uh, Translation says, says, Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, the fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and he took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Uh, do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham, uh, he looked up and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, for some of you, this may be a brand new story, brand new scripture. Uh, for others of you, it may be familiar. And uh, in, either, in either context, I want to hopefully bring some new light to it for this moment, this time. I want to just kind of preach and teach from this idea. Uh, you're here on purpose. You are here on purpose. Matter of fact, just shout that out loud. I am here on purpose. Pray with me. God, we bless you and we thank you for this time. We believe that you ordained it, you set it up. No matter uh, why we think we came, we, we believe you're setting something up for us right now. And so God, now bless the pew we're sitting on. Bless the person on the left and right. And God, indeed bless, bless each person who showed up. The seniors and those who are in their youth. Uh, those who've been in church for a while and those who are new to the faith. God, we're all here, we just now need to hear from heaven, so God have your way. We pray it, believing it is so, in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is in that same name that I ask now for fresh anointing, that you, God, will allow this message to make sense, that you will allow, God, your thoughts to be conveyed. And, God, I avail myself to be used for your glory. God, now, have your way. Fresh anointing. My mind is your thoughts. 
my lips to utter your words. Use me now for you alone. In Jesus' name we pray so. Believing it is done. Come on together we all shout amen. 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 You are uh, here, here on purpose. Uh, there, there's a famous fable that I love, uh, not just to read, but even to talk and tell. Talk about and tell. Uh, it's written by a young man by the name of Hans Christian Andersen back in 1844. Uh, he tells a story about uh, this duck that gives birth to all of these eggs, and while the eggs are hatching, uh, the last egg that hatches looks a little bit different. Uh, matter of fact, uh, while uh, she, the mother duck, is parading all of her, uh, her, uh, her newborn babies around, uh, this last one has a real long neck and just doesn't fit the ducks, it doesn't fit the bill. Uh, and so as a result, uh, they, they kind of ostracize this ugly duckling is what they call them. Uh, they talk about the ugly duckling, they uh, belittle the ugly duckling. Matter of fact, there's a farmer uh, that tries to almost kill this ugly duckling and eventually the ugly duckling runs away. Long story short, if you haven't heard it, never seen it before, never uh, talked about it, it is this ugly duckling uh, that finds itself staring at itself in the water. Uh, when it looks at itself in the water, it finally figures out that it doesn't look like any of the other ducks. It's been mistreated, been ostracized, talked about, kicked out of what was the normal area. And then after seeing itself in uh, its reflection, uh, the duck then looks up. And while looking up, it sees these beautiful swans that are now in the water. It looks at those swans, looks at itself again in the water, looks at the swans, looks at itself in the water, and it finally realizes that it was never a duck at all, but it had always been a beautiful swan. Uh, the problem was it was a swan hanging out with ducks. <laughs> Uh, whenever you have a swan hanging out with ducks, you're going to be out of place. You're going to feel a little funny. You're going to look a little different. You aren't going to act like those that are around you. And as a result, Hans Christian Andersen presents to us this image of the ugly duckling. And, and really the message is simple if you have heard it. It is uh, that you must know who you are. Uh, that's Black Panther. You've got to know who you are. You have to know what God has created you to be. You must know what you are designed to do. Because if, in fact, you ever find yourself in the wrong place, in the wrong area, comparing yourself to the wrong people, you too will feel like an ugly duck. <laughs> When in fact, God who created you from the uh, beginning of time always designed for you to live like a beautiful swan. My brothers and sisters, that is today's message. It is that like that swan, you have purpose. Sometimes you don't feel it. Sometimes you don't know it. Sometimes after life has changed and age has come, illness has sat in, money isn't what it used to be, and sometimes the uh, things around you have shifted and changed, you could wake up every day and forget that God actually has has purpose for your life. And I've really come today just to tell you that one message, God has purpose for you. Uh, he has purpose for you no matter what your past has been. He has purpose for you no matter what your educational status is. He has purpose for you no matter how long or how short you have been saved. He has purpose for you even if people have not co-signed on it. Even if you've been incarcerated, you're free now. Even if you used to be an addict, you're still anointed. Even if you used to be low, God has purpose for you. And today I've come just to remind someone that if you can wake up every day and remember that God has purpose for you, then you won't fall because of all of the people around you that don't know your value. You won't lose your mind because people speak against you and talk about you, but they really don't know you. Uh, if you could just wake up and understand you have purpose, uh, you won't complain so much about what others are doing or what they are not doing because you'll be too busy doing what what God's called you to do. Uh, matter of fact, come on, just somebody shout, I have purpose. I have, I have purpose. And that, that is so important because sometimes uh, uh, we feel as if we don't. And because the enemy knows you do, uh, the enemy's job is to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Uh, a matter of fact, some of you who God has ordained to speak and preach and teach or uh, give encouraging words or to lift up people on their job or to help them understand who they are. Uh, but what God would do is fill your mouth with other things so that you won't use your mouth 
for good things. Uh, uh, he'll keep you smoking a little bit more than you ought to. He'll uh, have you drinking something. I'm not talking about communion wine. Uh, uh, he, he'll have you uh, sipping on some things that give you a little topsy-turvy. You, uh, uh, you got gin and wine, but you forgot about the gin you wine. He'll, uh, uh, he'll have you talking and uh, using your mouth, locking your lips around people who have no good intent for you because the enemy knows that if he can stop what you're doing with your mouth positive, uh, uh, then he can hold you down in the negative. But God told me to tell you, you have purpose. Uh, uh, he can make you feel like because your body doesn't move like it used to after the diagnosis or after the treatment or after the radiation or after the surgery that you are no good. But you must remember it is through him that you live, move, and have your being. Uh, and just because you can't move like you used to, uh, you ought to move as much as you can with what you already have. Uh, if all you can do is wave your hands, you ought to wave. Uh, if all you can do is blink your eyes, you ought to blink them. Uh, but if all you can do is just sit down and sway side to side, you ought to sway. Uh, because God has purpose for your life. And that's today's message. It is to help you to understand that you are not alive by accident. You are not here by happenstance. Your birth was not a blooper. You made it through so much because God has something for you. Or sometimes young people like J. Cole, you'll feel like the middle child as if people don't pay you any attention. But God told me to tell you, even in your young age, God has purpose for you. And just in case you didn't believe me, I thought we'd stare into Genesis 22 because here we find people with purpose. So uh, the Bible's talking about this guy by the name of Abraham, and for whatever reason, they just pick him. Uh, he's not because of his credentials. It's not because of his credit report. It's not because of how long he's been saved. It's not because of his title in the church. It's not because of the degrees he has. Out of nowhere, God just comes down and says, Abraham, I want you to be my promised child. Uh, he shows up to him and says, uh, Abraham, you're going to be the father of many nations. Uh, uh, you're going to give birth to many children. As a matter of fact, Abe, if you just count the stars in the sky, that's how many uh, kids you're going to have. Look at the glitter on the ceiling, that's how many children you're going to get. Look at uh, the pebbles of sand on the beach, that's how many children you're going to give birth to. Uh, now the problem is Abraham was married but his wife was barren. Uh, she was unable to have any children and so when God comes to him and says you're going to be the father of many nations, uh, uh, he laughs about it. His wife laughs about it. They have no faith in it because although God is able to to do it. They don't think God's going to do it for them. Uh, as a result, God now has to prove to him who God is. Uh, Abraham heard the promise, uh, and so almost Van Diesel style, he rushes real fast and quick to try to get it done. Uh, but you do know if you move too fast, you're going to end up too furious. Uh, so here's what happens uh, to him. Uh, he has an opportunity to give birth. So he finds uh, uh, this woman by the name of Hagar, sleeps with Hagar, Hagar now gives birth to a child. They name him Ishmael. The problem is he's done what God was going to do, but he didn't do it the way God wanted it done. Oh, can I just pause there and tell you that life is not about getting what God said he was going to give you. Life is not about the end result of what you can get. Life is about doing it the way God wants you to do it. Life is not about just being blessed. The question is how you're going to get blessed. Uh, the question is not just how you're going to get to where God wants you to go. Uh, the question is, are you going to get there loving people and helping people? Or are you going to be stepping on people on your way there? Uh, Abraham had the child named Ishmael, but it was not the way God wanted it to happen. So what God did was uh, take him and his wife uh, and say, let me show you the right way to do it. Uh, you should have been there. She was barren, but God's getting ready to let her give birth. Uh, Abraham puts on a little Marvin Gaye, grabs a little Chardonnay, turns the lights out, and now they get it on. <laughs> After they get it on, now the barren woman gives birth to a child. Uh, they named him Isaac, and now what they could not do on their own, God has done for them. 
Oh God, I got a little ways to go, but I wish you reach over and tell your neighbor, you better trust God. Uh, because if you trust God, he can do what you can't do. You better trust God. He can do what they say you were not able to do. You better trust God. He'll give you access to what they say you could never have. You better trust God. He'll take your places. They were shutting doors on. You better learn how to trust God. Uh, so because he trusted God, eventually they have the baby. The baby born now is named Isaac. Uh, now this is important because Isaac is the miracle baby. Uh, they weren't even supposed to have him. So now Abraham and Isaac are spending time together. Uh, they are going to soccer practice. They are hanging out watching all of the games. They are going to track meets with Norcom and other high schools. They are enjoying their time together. They go fishing together. And now the Bible says they're getting ready to go to worship. Uh, the problem is God has now said to Abraham, I need you to give Isaac back to me. I want you to sacrifice Isaac. I need you to kill him. I know you just got him. I know you love him. I know you've been spending time with him. But I don't want you to get it twisted and enjoy what I give you more than the one who gives it to you. Uh, so I need you to give him back. Uh, the Bible says Abraham packs up all of his things and gets ready to take uh, this young man Isaac all the way to the top of the mountain. Uh, this is the part of the story you're familiar with. They're on their way. Uh, they're driving now up towards the top of the mountain. And as they're on their way to the top of the mountain, he pauses for a moment and tells his servants to stay right here. Uh, my son and I, Isaac, we're going to be right back. Uh, this is important because where God is getting ready to take them, everybody wasn't allowed to go. Uh, that they had to leave a few in order uh, to be what God wanted them to be. Uh, so when they left the two, they then ascended into the mountain. When they get into the mountain, the Bible says uh, that they start building the altar that they're going to need for worship. Stone on top of stone, they stack now and build the altar. Then they lay the wood on the altar. They start looking around because in order for worship to happen, there must be a lamb or a ram or a pigeon for the worship. They're supposed to kill the animal, set it on fire, and then God is going to be pleased. The problem is, it's Abraham and Isaac, but there is no ram. There's Abraham and Isaac, but there is no lamb. There's Abraham and their Isaac, but there is no pigeon. And then Abraham ties his son Isaac down, lays him on the altar, grabs his Smith and Wesson sword because he has to now kill him the way God has asked him to. And right before he lowers the knife, knife in hand, getting ready to kill his son, God screams from the heavens, Abraham, Abraham. Uh, this moment is important because he was getting ready to carry out the command, but he was going to lose his son. Uh, and as you stare at this, because you're holy, you've heard it before, you know that this is about prioritizing God over God's gifts. Uh, but if you were there, you'd have to wonder, for what purpose has God done this? I mean, it's one thing for God to bless you with a child like Isaac. It's one thing for God to bless you with a job, bless you with a car, bless you with finances. Uh, but why in the world would he then cause a circumstance to make you think you going to lose the one thing you have. I mean, it's one thing for God to give it to you, but then to allow it to be taken from you is another thing. And sometimes we begin to lose our purpose and our sense of identity when we start losing things that are valuable. When you're not making as much as you used to, you start to question your purpose. When your mobility isn't as quick as it used to, you start to question your purpose. When you're used to rearing your children, but now your children are gone and they're out of the house and you are an empty nester and then nobody's clothes to wash. There's no meals to be made. There's no one to take care of. You start questioning your purpose. When you come into worship and someone is doing what you used to do, because you used to be the head usher. You used to sing all the songs. You used to preach all the sermons. You used to pass out the fans, but now there's somebody else doing what you used to do. You start to question your purpose. When you go to work and there's somebody younger than you working at the job and you're now trying to figure out uh, you still don't keep the job. You start to question your per Come on, anybody ever been there before when you just wonder how you were going to make it, if you were still relevant, if you mattered? Have you ever been in that place where you had a boo, but your boo was texting people late at night and calling people early in the morning, and you were still wondering, do you have purpose? I mean, you walk down the aisle together, but now it's looking a little rough around the edges, and you're just trying to figure out because you're not the same size you were when y'all came down the aisle. You don't do what you 
used to do when you came down the aisle and why you don't want to talk to nobody about it. You're wondering, do you still have purpose? Abraham is in that situation because what he has been given is getting ready to be taken from him. And the question he's asking is, God, for what purpose am I here? And everybody don't have to testify, but I need a few people just to raise your hand and says, I've been, I've been in that place. I have wondered, I've wondered if just waking up every day was even worth it. I've wondered if showing up even mattered. I wondered if anybody ever noticed. I wondered if anyone cared. I wonder if I'd ever get any recognition from all of the work I've done and the tears you've cried and the love you've given and the money you've spent. But God told me to tell you that whenever you feel as if you've been overlooked, God God has purpose for your life. Whenever you feel like no one cares, when no one notices, God says you have purpose. And I thought, I thought real quick that we ought to talk to somebody about this. So I tried. I tried to catch up with Abraham. I called Abraham and said, hey, Abe, we need to talk to you about this purpose because I see you in this situation and you're trying to identify your purpose. And I called, but he never answered. Abraham didn't pick up his phone. I tried to text him. He did not text me back. I tried to IM him, but he didn't answer. So I don't know what we're going to do. Maybe, maybe we ought to talk to Isaac. I tried to catch to Isaac, but it looks like he's a little tied up for the moment. He uh, he can't talk. Tried to hit him on the DM. You know it goes down in the DM, but uh, he didn't even direct message me back. Uh, and so I'm looking at Abraham, and I'm looking at Isaac trying to figure out how are we going to discover how to live out our purpose, and I could not talk to Abraham, and uh, I could not talk to Isaac, but there in the thicket is a ram. Uh, look at it. There, there's, a, there's a ram caught uh, in the thicket He's stuck over there, and I know uh, I look crazy, and uh, sometimes you act crazy, but uh, I'm crazy enough to talk to the ram. I figured uh, if Abraham is not going to talk to me, and Isaac doesn't have anything to say, I figured I would ask the ram, how in the world uh, do you find uh, your purpose? And before you think I'm real crazy, let me submit to you, God can speak to us through animals. I mean, uh, if God can speak to Balaam through a donkey, I figured I could talk to the ram. If God could use a big fish to rescue Jonah, I figured I could talk to the ram. But uh, he could, you know, bring wheel, bring meals on wings uh, through Elijah uh, with ravens. I figured I could talk to the ram. And so here I am. Ram, help us figure out how in the world uh, do you find purpose when life seems to be stripping you of all you have. Here's what the ram said. Uh, the ram said, first, you have to find your purpose in identifying your specialty. Come on, let the church shout specialty. Specialty. Look at the ram. The ram is caught in a thicket, the Bible says, by its horns. It has uh, these thickets. It's stuck in the sticks. Uh, but it's caught by its horns. This is important uh, because uh, the horn is unique to the ram. Uh, every animal doesn't have horns. Uh, but this animal has a horn. Uh, and what is unique to the ram is what causes it to be right where God needs it to be. Uh, and I figured you weren't going to shout about that. But let me, let me just kind of build my case. Because uh, if it had been a snake, it would have slithered through the thicket and Isaac would have died. If it had, if it had been a horse, it would have galloped over the thicket and Isaac would have died. If it had been a bird, it would have flown over the thicket and Isaac would have died. But because of its unique and its specialty, because it had something that other animals just did not have, it was right in the place that God needed it to be. And can I tell you uh, that you too have some specialty uh, that people around you do not have. Uh, and because of what you have that they do not have, God wants to use you. Uh, you might not be able to say like they sing, but you make your joyful noise. Uh, you might not be able to play like they play, but you do what God's called you to do. Uh, you might not be able to stand as long as the ushers, uh, but you just work your administrative gift. You might not be able to preach like the preachers in the pulpit, uh, but you just keep reading your scripture on your job. Uh, you might not be able uh, to be a greeter or serve as a dancer, but whenever you do, you've got to do it as if you have been gifted by God. But uh, the problem is we compare ourselves to other people and to other animals. But nobody told you to be a snake or a horse or an eagle. You just got to learn how to be what you are. Because when you learn how to be what you are, you will discover that God can use you just as you are. Look at your neighbor and say, there's something special about me.
me. Uh, and you've got to get that because what Paul does is Paul says that all of us have different gifts. Romans chapter 12 says that there are many different gifts, but we make up one body. And he writes in the book of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians that there are gifts that some will preach and some will prophesy, some will teach and some will be apostles. And you just got to figure out which one you are. You don't have to do it like the person beside you, but just do what you can with what you have. You don't have to be the people that you idolize. Just be what God God's called you to be because when God blesses us he does not give a group blessing he gives you a personalized individual customized tailor-made blessing because he's blessing you based on what you are able to do I tell you one more time to look at your neighbor and say there's something special about you uh, that there's something different about you there a uh, matter of fact there's something so different about you that God writes your name on the palm of his hand uh, there's something so special about you that he said you are the apple of his eye uh, there's something so special about you uh, that when your enemies come to eat of your flesh, he'll knock them down, make them stumble and fall. Uh, there's something so special about you, you can get sick, uh, but then he'll get stripes so that you can be healed. Uh, there's something so special about you, uh, when people count you out, God will bring you back in again. Look at your neighbor say, there's something special about me. The ram, the ram says, understand that there's something special about who I am. Ram, uh, the ram, the ram is stuck uh, in the thicket. That's the first thing God says. If you're going to figure out your purpose, you have to understand uh, that you are unique. You uh, are special. When God created you, he broke the mold, threw it away so that it could not uh, be found. And you have to somehow embrace the new you, uh, even if it's not the old you, uh, that you want to be. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things. Things are, are made brand new. The ram, uh, the ram says, "One, you got to know that I'm special. I got this horn, uh, and this horn calls me to be right where I am." Which then brings us to the second thing that's really special about you, and that is, you got to understand that your purpose is also wrapped around your situation. Uh, let the church shout, "Situation." Uh, look, look at it. The text, uh, the text says that the, the ram is stuck in the thicket. That, that's important. Uh, he could have been running around, but he was not. He was stuck uh, in the stick thicket. He's got sticks uh, sticking in here. It's a sticky situation. He's, uh, uh, he, he's stuck. He can't move. It's not comfortable for him. It's not what he wants to be. If he could volunteer, that's not what he would have signed up for. Uh, he is in uh, the thicket. A matter of fact, uh, we don't even know how he got here. The fact that he arrived here as bad as it is, is a blessing all by itself. Uh, he's a ram that somehow made it all the way to the summit of the mountain, which means he had to climb up the rough side of the mountain and somehow avoid all of the prey uh, that should have taken him out. Uh, he should have been eaten up by something, a lion, a tiger, a bat, oh my, I mean, he, uh, something could have taken him out. Uh, and as, watch this, as bad as where he is may feel, uh, it's not as bad as as it could have been. Uh, he, he's in a situation that he would not choose, uh, but the situation is the very place that God wants to use him. And can I tell somebody sitting on your roll that if where you are is not where you want to be, if what you're dealing with is not what you want to happen, if how you feel is not what you would have signed up for, uh, fret not yourself too long uh, because God has a way of using the situation you're in. Uh, God, watch this, does not have to take you out of it to show up in it. God knows how to bless you right where you are. Thank you for watching the St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church broadcast. If you would like a copy of the message, please send your request to St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church, 2714 Frederick Boulevard, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. The cost is $15 for a CD and $20 for a DVD and includes shipping and handling. We pray you've been blessed by the message. Join us again next week. And remember to let the redeemed of the Lord say so.